hi to everybody. Um, I hope you've had a good week. We've had a crazy busy week, uh, but God has been with us. Um, I know for those of you starting back at school, it's been challenging. It's great if you can remember too that God is with you. Um, we've been sending out the Nehemiah books and delivering some of them. And um, they've gone out to flame. Uh, and we've also been begun to send out this amazing book called Victory on the Walls, which is for older older ones. So from about 10 and up um, to about 14, it's a fantastic sort of fictionalized version of uh, the Nehemiah story. And we're happy to send you one out, but you need to let us know if you'd like one. So WhatsApp us if you'd like a Victory on the Walls book. Um, the Zoom meetings have begun again, which is great. Um, and that's all going to happen over the next few weeks for Tribe, for Flame, for Ablaze. Um, also, there are prizes. There are prizes being given out. And these are for walls. We need pictures of walls and um, films of you building walls from anything, cereal boxes, books, uh, whatever you can think of, people, family members, pets. No, maybe not pets. No, that might not be good. But something. Build, build us a wall and send us a photo and we'll send out some prizes. So this is rather the theme for these weeks. Um, is all around these walls because we're looking at this man, Nehemiah. And here's our picture of him. We know a bit about him now. Uh, we know that he came from this city, Susa, where his family had been taken captive. He was probably born in this city, which is in uh, what we now know as Iran. Um, he was a thousand miles from his home city and where his family would have originally come from. And we know that he heard this news from his brother and others saying that the situation in Jerusalem, where all the enemies had come in, uh, remained really desperate uh, and the people were in real trouble really because the walls of the city were broken down and we know how Nehemiah wept over this his heart was moved he was um, so touched by this and we've talked about how these great moves of God and when God comes upon the earth to do things it is nearly always it starts in someone's heart um, and God allowed, uh, Nehemiah allowed God to work in his heart and over many weeks he prayed and cried out to God and during that time God put a plan into Nehemiah's heart to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. Um, and then he has the encounter with the king. Do you remember Artaxerxes with this extraordinary name? And the king says to him, he's the king's cupbearer, and he says, why are you so sad? And Nehemiah tells him it's because um, my city is burnt down with fire and the walls are broken and the people are in trouble. And he asked the king's permission to go back. And the king says, you can go back. I'm going to send you with an armed guard. And Nehemiah asks for wood to build up the, um, the gates of the wall. Um, and the king gives him all of this. And so Nehemiah and other men set out on this great journey um, towards Jerusalem. And they arrive there and he's there for several days. And then on the third day that night, and I like to think it was a moonlit night, Nehemiah goes out on this incredible walk round the city walls to see what's really happening. He goes with other men and I think during that time as well they saw the state of the people. Um, here's an amazing picture, an old picture that was drawn of that scene as he's going round and he sees the state not just of the walls but as also of the people. He goes right round the city looking at it all and then do you remember at daybreak as he comes back um, after that night out he begins to say to the people, come on, guys, come on, let's rebuild the walls. And he envision, envisions them, difficult word to say. Um, and he says, God's hand, the good hand of God is on me. God has helped me already. And he says, come on, let's build the walls like our city should like and should look like. And in those days, the cities were surrounded by these sloping walls that sloped inwards to protect the, the city. And he said, let's build it like it was. And he says, then the people, the, the children of God can come back um, into, in, into the city and can come back and live in Jerusalem. The Israelites can return. And it must have been a bit like the time when God, 300 years before, when Isaiah has this heavenly vision, when, when God, the God of heaven, cries out and calls out across Israel, who will go for me? Who can I send? Do you remember when Isaiah says, I'll go, here I am, you can send me. And in the same way, on that day in Jerusalem, when Nehemiah calls out to the people, uh, there was what I like to call an emoji moment. 
when something really remarkable happened that day. And this is what I, why I call it an emo, emoji moment. Here's a picture of one of the emojis. Now, you might have thought this emoji is showing someone high-fiving someone or waving, but actually, I think it's someone saying to God, putting up their hand and saying, here I am, you can send me. That's why I like to call it an emoji moment. And so across Jerusalem, the people began to volunteer and the men began to come. And it would have started with just a few of them and then more would have followed. And Nehemiah chapter 3 tells us that the priests came, even the high priest came and got involved. Many of the rulers came, businessmen came, craftsmen came, whole families began to come. It talks about the daughters being there. There would have been women working there too, probably young people and children. Men came, it says, from cities far away from Jerusalem, places like Jericho. They heard about what was happening and they began to come. And they must have looked down the walls and seen the people in the distance um, starting to work. There must have been hundreds of people. And then they began to drag the wood that they brought all the way from Susa, a thousand miles, this wood, especially from the emperor. And they must have built these gates. And it talks about them putting on the bolts and the bars of the gates huge numbers in the end would have come. I've got a great old picture here. They would have used ladders. They would have used all sorts of equipment. It was a massive joint effort and they all found something to do. Now, do you remember what George Muller used to say? God doesn't call everyone to build orphanages, but God has something for everyone to do. It doesn't matter how young you are, doesn't matter how old you are. You might be five or six, you might be 15 or 16. You might say, surely God doesn't have something for me to do, but he does. This is the amazing thing. And we're not building, are we, actual walls like they were. They were building a real, actual wall. We're not. We're building something spiritual. Whenever we do God's will or God's work, we're building God's kingdom. There's an amazing quote I love uh, by uh, uh, an 18th century evangelist called John Wesley. And he said this, Give me a hundred men who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and such will shake the gates of hell and they could set up the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. He was saying, let men volunteer and say, here I am, send me. And he's saying almost anything becomes possible. So flame and tribe and ablaze, just think about it. In your family, in your class at school, in your street, God wants to use you. He wants you to say to him, here I am, Lord, use me. And as adults, we might say, well, one day I'll say that to God, but I'm so busy at the moment. Or if you knew how desperate my situation was or maybe we might feel I have little to give to other people but right now I think he wants to use all of us. Uh, it could be just a text you send someone. Last Saturday, uh, two Saturdays ago, uh, Nick was out down in Queen's Crescent and someone sent him um, an extraordinary text. They could never have known what it meant at that moment but God used that person at that moment. It could be listening to someone, someone who really needs to just pour out their heart and you just listen to them. It could be praying for someone. It could be doing something really kind. About two months ago when I was so overwhelmed with work that I couldn't get to iron our clothes, Raywin suddenly said, give me some of your clothes and I'll iron them. She did something wonderful and helped me and it meant so much to me that she would bother to do that. God was using her. God is wanting to use us. Here's our challenge to say, here I am, Lord, uh, send me. So God wants us to have, I think, an emoji moment when we put up our hand and we say, here I am, Lord, send me. It must have been what Nehemiah did when he was kneeling, praying and weeping. He must have been saying to God, here I am, Lord, here I am, Lord, you can send me. So let's just pray. Father, we, we worship you today, the, the, the great King of heaven, the living God uh, who moves upon the earth. And Father, we pray, would you move in our own hearts, Lord? We, we want to be like Isaiah and we want to be like Nehemiah and we want to be like the men and the women who were building that wall. We want to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. You can use my life. You can use my life this week. 
can use my life where I'm working, where I'm at school, when I'm at home, but I want you to use my life, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Amen. Amen.